Today I have seven signs you'll be an atheist one day, but first, roll that intro. Today I have something pretty special for you. I got some of my friends, we're friends, right? I have friends, right? To help me out with these seven signs. So without further ado, let's get started. Seven signs you'll be an atheist one day. Number one, you avoid those God questions that bother you. If you find that you avoid questions about God because they make you feel uncomfortable, questions like, how can a God exist who's loving while at the same time there are so many terrible things happening in the world? Or how come nobody's, well, it feels like nobody's listening to me when I pray. Or so many other things that butt up against your own notion of God that you'd rather just not hear it or stay away from it altogether because it just doesn't feel good. Well, you may become an atheist soon. <laughs> Number two, you listen. No, like really, you listen. You actually listen to your opponent when they speak. One of the signs of dogmatic thinking is affirmation seeking. When engaging in dialogue, instead of being interested in and considering the position that's being presented, instead you're looking for holes, for opportunities to assert your perspective and refute the opposition. Once you become more open to the possibility that your position is as fallible as you are, the perspective can shift. Instead of wanting an opportunity to present your case and reinforce your existing perspective, you become more interested in challenging it. Instead of just affirmation, you seek the opportunity to scrutinize and criticize your beliefs. When this paradigm shift takes place, an interlocutor is no longer perceived as an opponent. Instead, they are a means by which to be exposed to an opposing perspective, to challenge yourself and ensure your positions are sound and reasonable and justified. This can begin to place you into the perspective of the opposing side. When this happens, more often than not, you start to honestly admit to yourself that it's reasonable and it makes sense. This may not always lead to deconversion itself, but it tears down some important walls. Instead of being closed, you're opened, and that means that you have to ask yourself some really hard questions. Number three, you don't take your holy book literally. You might slowly find yourself turning into an atheist, or at the very least a religious non, if you have a habit of not taking your holy book literally for whatever reason. Let's take the Bible for instance. If you start out from a strong position and then slowly start finding yourself backpedaling every single time you find that one of the claims in the Bible can't be justified as a literal claim, you'll find that the more times you have to throw something into the bucket of metaphor, the more bricks you're tearing down around your faith. If you think of your faith as a brick building, every single time you take part of your faith and translate it into metaphor, you are taking one of those bricks away. Eventually, you'll be left with nothing more than a foundation to build up from. And now that you've already discarded all of the old bricks and metaphors, you might not be using the same type of bricks to rebuild your house. After all, why did you get rid of them in the first place? How many pieces and parts of your faith do you have to strip away before the faith simply isn't there anymore? On that, how much of your faith is directly tied to the literature of your faith? If so much of your faith relies on that literature, and you start discarding the literature, what truly is left? You just might find that when rebuilding these walls for your metaphorical house, you might not be left with the same perspective as you had before where the walls once stood. Number four, you love science. If your flirtation with science extends beyond the occasional TED talk to a truly curious mindset, your inquisitive pilgrimage will invariably lead you on a quest for answers. At some point in this journey, you'll begin to realize that the universe is knowable, not in a new age anthropomorphic personified way, but knowable in the sense that we can and are uncovering how it works. And science is the method for how we investigate its inner workings. Like reverse engineering a foreign contraption, science asks how, and then sets about to find out. In neuroscience, you realize that seizures, sleep paralysis, and schizophrenia have chemical causes and aren't demon possession. Studying biology, genetics, and biochemistry, you'll learn how we know that all animals are related and that we're animals, that life is nothing more than chemistry, and that it can arise from non-life naturally. Anthropology, dendrochronology, and geology will show you how we know that the Earth is far older than most ancient religions could even fathom. 
Cracking into physics, you'll discover how particles pop into and out of existence ex nihilo, from nothing, and observe how even entire stars and planets can form entirely on their own. The more you fill in your gaps of understanding, the less room is left for magical supernatural forces. And as more and more of your supernatural beliefs fade into your cognitive graveyard of scientifically illiterate misconceptions, you'll realize how many times you've been wrong with the assertion, we don't know, therefore God, as your placeholder for ignorance. And you become comfortable with, we may not know yet, but perhaps we can find out together. Number five, you want to prove religion true, and use science to do it. You're on a journey to prove your religious belief true with empirical evidence. Like Luke in the cave on Dagobah, such a path has only what you take with you. Bring any presuppositions, nostalgia, traditions, or a desired outcome, and you bypass intellectual honesty for a home in self-delusion. Remember, on this journey, your holy book is not your guide, not your map. You're trying to recreate the puzzle that is your faith without using the picture on the box. Start with corner pieces. Who wrote your holy book? And when? What does it really say? Can you arrive at these conclusions using only evidence? Not faith? Next fit in the pieces of science, history, philosophy, ethics. Wherever the journey of evidence takes you, that's where your home is. Even if your faith couldn't come along. Number six. You know your faith foundation is only good enough for you. You acknowledge that your God belief is only based on personal experience. I grew up as religious as they come. I believed it with all of my heart and it was the core thing about me. It was the center of my personality. And at a certain point between being totally religious and atheist, I realized that the reasons why I believed those things that I felt were what atheists often refer to as anecdotal evidence. These were personal experiences that I had identified as religious experiences because of influence of other people's stories. I, I took what I had heard of people in similar circumstances and assumed that the conclusion they came to for their experience was the same I came to. Growing up religious, I thought I felt the Holy Ghost. And that was certainly the thing that stuck out the most to me, that I had had witness born to me. And then the day came when I couldn't explain a lot of the things that I admitted were inconsistent and seemed strange about a world with a loving God, but I just knew it was the case. And this was one of my steps toward losing my religion. Losing my religion. When I finally realized my reasons for believing weren't good enough for anybody besides me. And finally, the day came where I had to acknowledge that the reasons why I believed were really only good reasons for me, or at least I thought so at the time. Number seven, you're a little obsessed with debating atheists. You spend a little too much time debating atheists. Once trivial and routine things such as scrolling through your social media newsfeed have now become an obsessive hunt for someone or something that you disagree with. People who are confident in their belief or who have no doubt in their faith don't pay any attention to anything atheists have to say. These conversations trigger you. Now, why is that? Well, if we're 100% honest with each other, it's because you have doubts too. And that's okay. Our brains are hardwired to be curious, to ask questions, and to seek the answers to those questions. Religion tries to extinguish those sparks, instead dampening it with verses from ancient books telling you to trust and obey and that faith is all that you need. When you confront us, you're really confronting yourself. When you demand that we give you evidence that there is no God, you're really just grasping at evidence for your own. When you try to convince us to believe, you're really just trying to convince yourself. Hearing us talk about being skeptical, asking questions, pointing out contradictions. That's like pouring gas on that mind. We engage you because we see those sparks, of curiosity and doubt. We are not your enemy. Instead, think of us like a flint. We engage your arguments, waiting, hoping for that one strike that sends a spark into that curiosity and doubt 
igniting the flames that burn away that barricade that religion has put up, freeing you to finally seek the answers to the questions that you have and not some ancient book. Thank you for watching and a special thank you goes out to everybody who participated in this collab project here. The links to everyone you saw can be seen below and they all make wonderful content. These are some of my favorite people. Please do let me know down in the comments whether or not you liked this format, the seven things thing, because I think it's actually a series I'd like to introduce to the channel. If you love the channel and you'd like to support it, don't forget, I do have a Patreon. If this is your first time here, the algorithm, it thinks you should watch this video. Personally, at present, this is my favorite video. And if this is your first time, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button right over there. And then lastly, if you click on my hand and say, Dear Mr. Atheist, three times, I'll show up behind you. Remember, 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 stay skeptical, my friends.